In the last lecture, we were uh, discussing the notion of uh, elementary operations. There were three elementary operations that were uh, uh, defined. The formulas for these elementary operations were also given. Uh, today, we will continue with uh, our discussion on uh, these elementary row operations and how they help in uh, reducing a system of equations uh, Ax equal to b into a system of equations of the form Cx equals d, where a reduction here means that um, the matrix C has uh, a simpler structure than A. Now, what exactly is this structure? Uh, that will be made uh, precise uh, a little later. So, we will discuss this, this problem of reducing uh, a system to a simpler system, reducing a given system to a simpler system. Uh, what we would also like to do is, uh, see there is an intermediate uh, notion of uh, two systems being equivalent. So, we will discuss uh, this notion uh, before we get into proving, before uh, getting into uh, the problem of uh, elementary row operations and uh, what it does to a system of linear equations. Okay. So, what I want to discuss now is uh, given two systems of uh, linear equations, when are they called uh, equivalent. So, we will discuss the notion of equivalence of two linear systems. Okay. So, let us consider the following. So, as before we have the system, um, we have the system A x equal to b which uh, we will call as 1, where uh, A is uh, a rectangular matrix m rows and uh, n columns and uh, the right hand side requirement vector is uh, has uh, m coordinates. So, it is a vector in R m. Let us write this equation in full. So, we have something like the following a 1 1 x 1 plus uh, a 1 2 x 2 plus etcetera a 1 n x n equals b 1. The second equation a 2 1 x 1 plus uh, a 2 2 x 2 plus etcetera plus uh, a 2 n x n equals b 2. And let me just write down the last equation a m 1 x 1 plus a m 2 x 2 plus etcetera a m n x n equals uh, b m. Okay. So, this is the expanded uh, version of this equation a x equal to b. Okay. Now, suppose I choose, uh, choose certain scalars let us say I have alpha 1, alpha 2, etcetera, alpha, alpha k. I, I choose k scalars, k less than m be chosen. Suppose that I multiply the first equation by alpha 1, second equation by alpha 2, etcetera, the kth equation by alpha k, then I get the following uh, equation. Okay. I multiply the first equation by alpha 1, second equation by alpha 2, etc. the kth equation by alpha k and then form a new equation. This equation is called a linear combination of the first k equations of this system. Okay. So, I get the new equation which uh, is uh, so alpha 1 into a 1 1 x 1 plus a 1 2 x 2 etc. a 1 n x n plus uh, alpha 2 into a 2 1 x 1 etcetera a 2 n x n etcetera plus uh, alpha k into a k 1 x 1 etcetera a k n x n. I form this left hand side is linear combination of the left hand sides of the first k equations. The right hand side also I take uh, a similar linear combination alpha 1 uh, b 1 plus alpha 2 b 2 etcetera plus uh, alpha k b k. I can rewrite this as that is that is this can be written as alpha 1 into okay, I will write this as alpha 1 a 1 1 plus alpha 2 a 2 1 etcetera plus alpha k a k 1 into x 1 plus. So, all that I am trying to do is to collect the coefficients of x 1, collect the coefficients of h 2 etcetera and then see uh, what that equation is. So, the next equation is 
alpha 1 a 1 2 plus alpha 2 a 2 2 etcetera plus alpha k a k 2 into x 2 plus etcetera alpha k a k 1 alpha 1 a 1 1 plus alpha 2 a 2 1 etcetera alpha 1 a 1 2 plus alpha 2 a 2 2 etcetera the kth equation is alpha k a 1 k plus alpha 2 a 2 k plus etcetera plus uh, alpha sorry this is alpha 1 alpha 2 a 2 k etcetera plus alpha k a k k into x k equals alpha 1 b 1 etcetera alpha k b k. Okay, so, all that I have done is all that I have done is to consider a new equation apart from these uh, m equations. This is a new equation uh, some some constant times x 1 constant times x 2 etcetera constant times x k right hand side is of this form the same constants uh, right hand side is of this form. Okay. Now, the point that I am trying to make uh, is the following you take any solution x 1 etcetera x n that satisfies these m equations you take any solution x 1 etcetera x n that satisfies these equations then that solution will satisfy this equation also any solution in fact the way we have taken any solution satisfying the first k equations will be a solution for for this single equation will be a solution for this single equation that means what so uh, this is called uh, the the thing that we have written down here is a linear combination of the equations of the first k equations of the system 1 the single equation is a linear combination of the first k equations of the system so any so any sol any solution of system 1 will also be a solution of an equation obtained by taking linear combinations of the equations of system 1 okay so consider let us consider this uh, uh, new system consider the new system let's uh, uh, call it by something else maybe c11 x1 plus c12 x2 plus etc plus c1 n x n equals uh, d1 c22 x2 etc sorry c21 x1 plus c22 x2 plus etc c2 n x n equals d2 i'm just going to consider uh, k equations for the moment c k 1 x 1 plus c k 2 x 2 plus etc plus c k n x n equals d k. So, I am uh, considering a new system which has the property that uh, each equation of this new system is obtained by system 1 by considering linear combinations that is take the first equation that is obtained by a certain linear combination of the m equations of system 1 similarly equation 2 is certain linear combination of the m equations of system 1 etc so each equation here is obtained as a linear combination of a certain linear combination of the m equations of system 1 then what follows is that any solution of system 1 will be a solution of system 2 i'll call this 2 i'll call this 2 so this is the point any solution of system 1 will be will be a solution of system 2 will be a solution of system 2 but uh, the converse is in general false the converse is in general false however suppose that these two systems are related by the fact that each equation of system 2 is a linear combination of the equations of system 1 as well as the fact that each equation of system 1 is a linear combination of equations of system 2 if that happens then from whatever we have discussed till now it follows that these two equations have the same solution okay 
when we go from system 1 to system 2 what we are trying to do is to up, uh, is to obtain equi each equi uh, is to observe that each equation in system 1 has been obtained as a linear combination of the equations of system 1 and so the any solution of system 1 must be a solution of system 2 all that I am trying to do is to go the other way around and uh, I want to conclude that these two systems have the same set of solutions this can be done if I am able to verify so this is true if it holds that every solution of system every equation of system 1 is a linear combination of the equations of system 2 okay uh, there is a name for uh, uh, two systems that are related by this uh, this condition uh, that is uh, called equivalent system so let me just uh, give a definition two systems are uh, said to be equivalent two systems are said to be equivalent if each equation of uh, each system is a linear combination is a linear combination of the equations of the other system of the other system so i have two system they are related by this uh, this condition such systems uh, will be called uh, equivalent systems so the argument that i have given now can be formalized in the following statement theorem <coughs> equivalent linear systems have uh, the same solution set equivalent linear systems have the same solution set now this is a fundamental lemma that will be useful to us let me just give uh, a numerical example uh, to uh, kind of illustrate uh, what is going on uh, let us uh, consider the following uh, equations so first equation is x1 plus 2x2 plus 5x3 equals 0 the second equation is x1 plus 3x2 plus 8x3 equal to 0. The third equation is minus x1 plus x2 plus 4x3 equals 0. So, this is the third equation. Now, this is system 1, let us say. Let me also write, uh, let me also write system 2. So, system 2 for me is uh, so let me write it on this side x2 plus 2x3 equals uh, 0 so this is uh, one equation uh, x1 minus x3 equals 0 and then x1 plus x3 equals 0 I will call this system 2 and uh, make the following observation make the following observation which is so let me make the following observation which is that um, let us look at so equation 2 is uh, can be solved uh, quite easily ok let us do that uh, quickly uh, from the second equation I have x1 equals uh, let us say x3 equals x1 I substitute into this then the third equation gives me 2 x1 equal to 0 that is x1 equal to 0 go back to the second equation I get x3 equal to 0 from this equation it follows that x2 is 0. So system 2 system 2 has 0 x1 equal to x2 equal to x3 equal to 0 as the only solution this is the only solution for system 2 has 0 as the only solution ok ok on the other hand uh, on the other hand let us look at um, let us look at system 1 ok let us look at system 1 
I will try and see whether uh, I will try and see whether each equation here is uh, obtained as a linear combination of the equations of uh, system 1. Okay, so my objective is to solve equation 1. Uh, it might turn out that these two systems are equivalent. I do not know. We need to verify that. Okay, but let us look at uh, let us look at the first equation x 2 plus 2 x 3 equals 0. I will leave it uh, for you to verify that uh, the first equation and the second equation are linear or certain linear combinations of the three equations of system 1. Okay. I will leave this as an exercise for you to verify. You can choose uh, easy constants uh, and then multiply multiply the equation by the constant, this by another constant, add, subtract and do these operations. You will be able to show that the first two equations are linear combinations of uh, certain linear combinations of the three equations of system 1. So, any solution of system 1 will satisfy the first two equations, but the third equation I am claiming that is not a linear combination of the three equations of system 1. The third equation here in system 2 is not a linear combination of the three equations of system 1. Now, this is difficult to prove, but what we can do is to make the following observation. Okay. This is in general difficult to prove, but what we can do is to observe that, uh, so okay, what I will try and do is to give a solution of uh, equation system 1 which does not satisfy the third equation, it will then follow that uh, this is not a linear combination of the three equations of system 1. Okay. So, let us consider the case, I just give one, uh, one uh, set of values, let us say x 1 equal to x 3 equal to 1 and uh, x 2 equals minus 3. Okay. x 1 equal to x 3 equal to 1, x 2 is minus 3. Then let us look at the first equation, x 1 plus 2 x 2 is uh, 6 minus 6 plus 6 that is 0. The second equation is x 1 plus 3 x 2 that is 1 minus 9 plus 8 that is 0. The third equation is uh, minus x 1 minus 1 minus 3 minus 4 plus 4 is 0. So, this solves 1. This is a solution of system 1. You can now observe that uh, this is obviously not a solution of system 2. The third equation is not satisfied because x 1 equal to x 3 equal to 1 and so this is not satisfied. And so, now it follows, okay. it now follows that uh, see if, if the third equation here were a linear combination of the three equations of system 1, then any solution of system 1 would have to be a solution of the third equation. Now, that is not hap that does not happen in this example. And so, equa system 2 is not equivalent to system 1. Okay. Let us also observe that the general solution set of uh, this system is of this form. I will call S as the solution set that is of the form alpha times 1 minus 3 1 where alpha is an arbitrary real number. Okay. It can be proved by the usual method of eliminating the variables that this is the most general, this is the solution set. Any solution will be of this type. Let us observe that, let us observe that uh, 0 is contained in this for the choice alpha equal to 0, okay. which means that any equation here is a linear combination of the equations of 2, but not the other way around. Okay. So, this, these two systems are not equivalent. Okay. So, this is just to illustrate given example of two systems which are not equivalent. So, these two systems are not equivalent. When they are equivalent, the solutions sets will be the same. Okay. We were discussing the concept of uh, elementary row operations in the last class and then uh, there is a pause we are looking at something else, uh, systems, two systems being equivalent. Okay. The thing is that these uh, notions are related. Considering linear combinations of equations of a system is amounting to uh, doing a certain elementary row operation or a sequence of elementary row operations. Okay. We will we'll make this precise, we will make this notion, we will make this uh, 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 idea precise, but before that let us go back and recall the definition of uh, the elementary row operations. Okay. So, 
what were the operations? We call uh, these as E1, E2, E3. So each elementary row operation takes a matrix of order m cross n to another matrix of order m cross n. The definition is the first elementary row operation is uh, multiplying, an, uh, multiplying a row by a non-zero scalar. So let us say that uh, I multiply the sth row by a non-zero scalar alpha, then uh, that row changes to alpha asj. All the other rows remain the same when, alpha, when i is not equal to s. This is the first operation. The second operation is uh, the second operation is to replace the sth row by sth row plus alpha times the rth row. So when i is equal to s, I am replacing the sth row. So this corresponds to the first index. So I am actually writing down uh, the ijth entry of e1, ijth entry of e2, etc. So the first index corresponds uh, to the row, the second one corresponds to the column. So when i is equal to s, it is uh, replacing the sth row by sth row plus, so that is asj plus alpha times the tth row. That is what I remember having used earlier. And then the other rows are kept as they are. If i is not equal to s, then uh, it is just uh, aij. This is the second elementary row operation that we discussed last time. The third one is just interchange of rows. Let us say we interchange uh, s row and uh, the r row for instance. Then the ij uh, entry of this matrix is if uh, i is equal to r, i is equal to s, i is not equal to r comma s. So I am simply interchanging the rows uh, r and the, interchanging the rows r and s. So when i is equal to r, it is asj. When i is equal to s, it is arj. All the other entries uh, remain the same. This is aij. These are the three elementary row operations. I made the statement last time that uh, the uh, these functions, each of these functions has an inverse and the inverse is also of the same type. So let us see that uh, quickly. So that is going to be my next result. Each elementary row operation each elementary row operation is uh, in, uh, has an inverse. Let me say has an inverse and uh, the inverse is uh, also an elementary row operation. The inverse is also an elementary row operation. What is more important? Elementary row operation. What is more important is that it is an elementary row operation of the same type. It is also an elementary row operation of the same type. Okay, let us prove this. Let us dispose of the easy cases. Uh, Let us uh, let's look at the uh, first elementary row operation where we multiply a row by a non-zero scalar. Okay. So all that I will do is explicitly write down the inverse uh, functions. So let me call, let me use primes to denote, to denote the inverse functions. So I am saying that the inverse of the first elementary row operation E1A will be denoted by E1 prime of A. I will simply give the formula for that. Then we can probably verify uh, one or two of them. So E1 prime is, uh, I, I must see the inverse operation must give me the matrix A that I started with. So given a matrix A, I do the elementary row operation E1 on that and then I need to do another elementary row operation which will nullify the effect. So we should give me back uh, the matrix uh, Aij. So obviously since alpha is not 0, it will be just this uh, uh, this definition. So look at 1 by alpha Asj, right? so I am replacing, uh, uh, I am multiplying the sth row by the constant times 1 by alpha. This operation is allowed. This is multiplying uh, a row by a constant, right? that is elementary row operation of the first type. Of course, the other entries are left as they are. So this is my E1 prime. Let us quickly verify that uh, E1 uh, into E1 prime gives me the identity function. Okay. So let us look at, uh, uh, let us call it, let us call E1 prime of A, let us call E1 prime of A as uh, B. Then, uh, okay, then I'll write down uh, the entries of B. 
So, B i j B i j by definition is so even prime is uh, the new matrix B ok B i j by definition is just this 1 by alpha A s j if i is equal to s it is uh, A i j if uh, i is not equal to s. So, I am just calling this as a new matrix B. Now, for this for this matrix B I will do the operation E 1 that is that is I am now asking you to consider consider E 1 of see this is a circle no? E 1 E 1 prime of A. I want to show that this is equal to A it would then follow that this composition is the identity mapping. So, this is E 1 of so it is a composition function that is E 1 of I am calling this as the matrix B E 1 prime of A as B and so now I will do this elementary row operation on B. Now, uh, how is this uh, how is this defined? So, just look at E 1 of B the i j th entry. So, you need to go back to this definition multiply the s th row by alpha leave all the other rows as they are. So, E 1 B i j multiply the s th row uh, that is B s j by alpha this is when uh, i is equal to s all the other entries are left as they are that is B i j. So, I am now doing an op uh, elementary operation 1 on B. So, I am uh, preferring to use uh, B i j. So, when i is not equal to s. Now, go back uh, to this and then see what uh, these entries are. So, this is equal to alpha times B s j. What is B s j? When i is equal to s that gives me B s j that corresponds to this. So, alpha into 1 by alpha into A s j. So, this is when i is equal to s when i is not equal to s when i is not equal to s it is just a i j this is equal to a i j when i is not equal to s. Now, you can see that uh, this is precisely the matrix A this is precisely the matrix A. So, what we have shown is that so what we have shown is that uh, E 1 of E 1 prime of A we have shown that it is equal to A and so it follows that E 1 circle E 1 prime equals the identity function. We can uh, show in a similar manner that E 1 prime circle E 1 1 is also the identity function I leave that part I leave that part that is very similar to this. Okay, so, you, 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 you must observe here that uh, second part it is an elementary row it is invertible not only that it is an elementary row operation of the same type type here means multiplying the sth row by a non zero scalar. Okay. Uh, we can similarly verify that uh, the other two operations are also invertible and that uh, the inverses are of the same type um, I will leave uh, uh, this part as an exercise uh, without getting into the details all that I will do is to write down the inverse uh, fun, in, uh, formula for the inverse uh, e 2 prime of a. Now, e 2 e 2 is this operation replacing the s th row by s th row plus uh, constant non zero constant times uh, t j. Now, e 2 prime the inverse of that can be shown to satisfy this. So, when i is uh, equal to s it is again the s th row that is uh, a s j this time it will be minus alpha times uh, a t j. The other uh, row elements uh, are uh, kept as they are i is not equal to s. Now, this is a, this is a, an elementary we have to show that this is an inverse uh, this is the inverse of E 2, but let us say we have shown that then it follows that the inverse is also an elementary row operation of the same type that is it replaces the s row by s row plus a constant times the t row. Okay. So, this is also an elementary row operation of the same type as E 2 finally, E 3 prime is straightforward. E, so, again this is the i j th entry E 3 prime is straightforward you interchange two rows you do the same interchange once again you will get uh, the matrix A. So, E 3 prime of A this time I will write it is just E 3 of A this is uh, such a thing is called a self invertible map. 
3 is its own inverse. Okay, so, that is uh, again uh, uh, if E 3 is interchanging rho r and rho s, then uh, E 3 prime the inverse is interchanging again rho r and rho s. So, it is again an elementary rho, rho operation of the same type as E 3. Okay, so, that uh, proves uh, this theorem. Now, this uh, gives us uh, a, this leads to another definition called uh, rho equivalent matrices. So, let me write the definition here, the definition of uh, rho equivalent matrices. R m cross n for me will be the set of all matrices uh, having m rows and n columns. So, this will be my notation. Uh, this uh, notation will be considered again when we discuss the notion of vector spaces. Okay. Suppose I have two matrices, then we say that um, A is A is said to be rho equivalent. A is said to be rho equivalent to B. Remember uh, one equivalence that we considered earlier is that of systems being equivalent. Okay. We are now considering equivalence of two matrices of the same order. However, we will show that these two notions are uh, rela related to each other. Okay. A is said to be rho equivalent to B if B can be obtained, if the matrix B can be obtained from the matrix A, what is the condition? By a sequence of, by a finite sequence always, by a finite sequence of elementary row operations, by a finite sequence of elementary row operations on the matrix A. B is said to be row equivalent, A is said to be row equivalent to B if B can be obtained from A by a finite sequence of elementary row operations on the matrix A. So, starting with A, I arrive at the matrix B, then I say that A is rho equivalent to B. Okay. Then, then uh, one would like to ask the question as to whether one can go the other way around. If uh, A is rho equivalent to B, can it happen that B is rho equivalent to A? Okay. Obviously, A is rho equivalent to itself. You do not do any operations, you leave it as it is, then uh, A is uh, rho equivalent to A, a finite sequence of uh, operations has been performed. So, A is rho equivalent to itself. The question is if A is rho equivalent to B, then can we go the other way around? That is whether B is rho equivalent to A. We will answer this question uh, a little later uh, in the next couple of uh, lectures by observing that uh, the process uh, of uh, going from A to B can be reversed. In fact, this can be done by means of the elementary row operations that we have discussed just now we will look at what is called as uh, the notion of elementary matrices. So, each elementary uh, row operation gives rise to an elementary matrix. Using the elementary matrices, we will show that if A is rho equivalent to B, then B is rho equivalent to A. We will also show that if A is rho equivalent to B and B is rho equivalent to C, then A is rho equivalent to C. Okay. Now, this is intuitively obvious, but it can again be a formal proof can again be given for this. That is, if uh, uh, on the matrix A, you perform a finite sequence of elementary row operations to get the matrix B and then further down you perform a finite sequence of elementary row operations on B to get the matrix C, then obviously you do the same, the sequence one after the other, uh, sequence of elementary row operations one after the other on the matrix A, you will end up with the matrix C. So, this transitive relation, transitive relationship is, uh, is uh, obvious from the definition. All right. So, this, the, this uh, uh, operation, this relation uh, equivalence on the set of all m cross n matrices is really an equivalence relation, right? a reflexive, anti-symmetric, transitive relation. 
is called uh, an equivalence relation. So this is actually an equivalence relation that justifies the name equivalence. The only thing is there is an adjective here because you are doing elementary row operations. So row equivalence is actually an equivalence relation. Okay. Now maybe I can give a, a simple example uh, of obtaining uh, a matrix B from a matrix A. So let us look at one simple numerical example. Um, and then uh, in the next lecture, I will consider the problem of how the notion of equivalent systems of linear equations related to row equivalence of two specific matrices. Okay, this, this link, this relationship is an important relationship where we will be able to consolidate, uh, uh, consolidate these two seemingly uh, relate, uh, unrelated uh, notions of uh, row equivalent matrices and uh, equivalent systems of linear equations. Okay. So let me uh, conclude today's lecture by uh, considering a, a simple example of, uh, of, a matrix, of, of constructing a matrix B that is row equivalent to a matrix A for instance. So let us take uh, A to be let us say 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 1, 0, 1 and uh, let me take uh, B to be the matrix 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. Uh, the entries are all very simple, they are either 0 or 1. Note that B is the identity matrix of order 3. Okay. Now let us do, so all that I need to show, so the claim is that a is row equivalent to B that is I will show that upon a sequence of uh, uh, finite sequence of elementary row operations on A I will get the matrix B. Okay, let us see how this is done. Uh, so let me write A once again A is uh, 1 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 now I will do the following elementary row operation on the matrix A that is I will replace row 3 by minus 1 times row 1 plus row 3 and leave the second row as it is. Then A is equivalent to, so I will use this uh, symbol, then A is equivalent, row equivalent to the matrix. The first row entry is the same, the second row is also the same, the third row is minus this row plus this row. So that gives me 0, minus 1, 1. Then uh, I do the following operation. Uh, row 3 is um, row 2, 1 times row 2 plus row 3, okay. And uh, I should also do the following operation on row 1. Row 1 will be minus uh, 1 times row 2 plus row 1. So I am keeping row 2 fixed. When I, when I, when I do this, uh, then I get the following matrix which is row equivalent to the matrix A. So the second row is kept as it is, so I will write that as it is 0, 1, 0. Uh, the f uh, third row becomes uh, row 2 plus row, so I have to just add these two rows. That gives me 0, 0, 1 and uh, row 1 is replaced by minus row 2 plus row 1. So this is 1, 0, 0. This is precisely the matrix B. And so A is row equivalent to B. Okay. Now in this example you can verify uh, by doing the inverse operations. Say I have done elementary row operations. I know that each elementary row operation is invertible and that the inverse is also of the same type. So starting from B I can do the inverse elementary row operations and uh, end up with uh, the matrix A. Okay. So it can be verified in this numerical example that uh, a is row equivalent to B and uh, that B is row equivalent to A. Okay. Uh, so let me stop uh, today's uh, lecture with this example. The relationship between uh, equivalent uh, systems of linear equations and row equivalent matrices. I have two systems Ax equal to B and Cx equal to D. I will actually show that if Ax equal to B and Cx equal to D are equivalent, then the matrix A comma D, sorry, A comma B 
and the matrix C comma D are actually row equivalent. Okay, so this will help us uh, to formalize uh, Gaussian elimination. That will be done in the next uh, few lectures. So let me stop here.